Welcome to the God-Centered Recovery Podcast brought to you by Narrowgate Ministries. This podcast is dedicated to giving you a God-centered approach to recovery and to life. Follow along. Let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the God-Centered Recovery Podcast. I am glad to be back at you again. So this is episode four, and we're going to be covering the topic or reviewing the topic that took place last week. And it was Pornhub or God's kind of love. We decide, right? And so I'm going to go into what I feel and what I believe are some detrimental and some positive things for intimacy inside of a relationship. And uh, we get to decide whether we want to walk in those or not. Man, that was a powerful statistic that we had in the podcast last week with that one in four men struggle with pornography. What that tells me is that there, we have intimacy problems, right? We got problems with authenticity. We got problems with vulnerability. We got problems with communication. Uh, we got problems with connection uh, to ourselves, uh, to our spouses, and to other people in general. So when you look at pornography, I don't believe pornography is ever the problem, right? It's a symptom of a problem and it's a cheap substitute of trying to connect and trying to find the intimacy because we're not being open and we're not being vulnerable. But at any rate, so to build the intimacy, to build this powerful relationship, it all starts with some simple key ingredients. So I'm going to list what those are. And first is being home. Like a lot of times, men, we're just... We're out in the business world. We're, you know, uh, truck drivers, construction workers or whatever it is. And we have these long hours and these long travels and um, we're never home. Now, I'm not saying that you need to immediately change your situation, but to ask yourself, can I develop intimacy when I'm never home? And there's oftentimes there's reasons why we are never home because there are problems at home, right? We're escaping into our jobs or, or, or whatever it is. And, and we are not connecting. So the first thing to, to discover this intimacy and how power, powerful intimacy is actually begin to schedule your time so you can be home more. We offer all these excuses, right? It's my job. You know, I do this, that, and the other thing, find a way to be home more is one of the first keys. The second one, of course, is communication. And man, we have a problem with this, right? Communicating what we actually want. And there's multiple reasons for that. And I think one of the first reasons is, is that we don't even really know what we want sometimes. Like we're, we haven't really solidified. We don't know ourselves very well. And so we're not connecting with ourselves. And therefore, we are not communicating because we don't really know exactly what it is that we want. Mm. So being willing to communicate. The next one is being present. Oftentimes we can be home. We can be even communicating uh, sometimes. But a lot of times we come home and we sedate in one way or fashion. A lot of men sedate with marijuana and alcohol. And I know this is a, a Christian men's podcast, but, uh, it still happens, right? Uh, we as, as men, Christian or not, um, struggle with in the intimacy department, come home instead of communicating, instead of connecting, instead of building relationship. Uh, what happens is we sedate, jump on the Facebook, right? And just scroll for hours, just scrolling. He's just down the rabbit hole of YouTube. And so we just go down that rabbit hole, watch five, 10, 15 videos. Might uh, sedate with alcohol, go to sleep at night, or you might have had a doctor prescribe you some pills, right? And so we do all these things, and the intimacy and the connection is leaving and departing from our relationship, and it's suffering. So one, two, three was this being home communicating and being present. You know, one of the greatest things that we could do, and this is number four is begin to make deposits. We know what happens to our marriage when we, when we don't make deposits, right? We don't make those compliments. 
We don't make those connections. We don't give those kisses. We don't do those embraces. And all of a sudden, our marriage begins to fall apart, right? Date night goes out the window. You look at uh, the last time you had date night, you were like a teenager. <laughs> you know, uh, some men, she's six months, 12 months before you ever take your wife out on a date. And we don't have a clue of why the intimacy is lacking, right? We're not home. We're avoiding. We're not communicating. We're not being present. We're sedating and we're not making deposits. And all of a sudden we, we wonder why we get slapped with some divorce papers and we're kind of clueless. Like, but the reality is, is that we all kind of know what it takes to have a powerful marriage. Um, we just fail to carry out what we know to be true. And so there should be no surprise, right? Wondering why we got divorce papers when all of these things are taking place in our life. Number five is this, is that uh, we as men felt to live by a code. You know, our, our wives see us and if we have integrity and we have a system of beliefs and we have something that we live by, that is attractive, that is a, an amazing thing for a woman. And some of this code could be is like, I'm the kind of man that is going to be vulnerable. I'm the kind of man that is going to share how I feel. I'm the kind of man that's going to take my wife out on a date. I'm the kind of man that is intimate. And when we don't have a code, we just kind of live aimlessly, right? We don't have creeds. We don't have something to live by. You know, uh, when it comes to temptation with another woman, do you have the code? I'm the kind of man that is faithful. You know, I'm the kind of man that doesn't let uh, lust control and, and dominate his life. And so having these codes, having these standards on which you live by is what is going to help you develop that powerful intimacy in your life. So one of the, the, the most detrimental things that you could do to a relationship um, with your wife is to add pornography in the mix. Okay. And this is my personal opinion and uh, I will run with it because this is my podcast. And if you don't, you know, if I'm not your cup of tea, then don't drink from me. Right. But adding pornography to a relationship is highly detrimental for multiple reasons. Uh, if you listen to last week's podcast, we go into detail about those reasons, but uh, I'll give you just brief reasons um, here. But the first reason is this, is that men live in fantasy land already, right? The world has given us fantasy and the fact that we would settle or go to fantasy instead of reality is a big problem because here's where the world is going to. If you haven't recognized it yet. We are on demand culture and we are going to have things provided for us in the snap of our fingers. This is where the world is going to. And so they're going to develop these nice robots that are um, so lifelike and so real. Right. And they're going to be at your very beck and call and your request. And if you want uh, something done for you, the robot's going to take care of it for you. Okay. And we're already primed and ready to slide right into that false reality because of pornography. And so when these robots start coming out, men are going to line up hook, line and sinker for the fake because they want a yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And this robot will do whatever you want. And men are going to be lined up to develop intimacy with a machine. You don't think so? This is where the world is coming to mark my words. And because we have settled for fantasy and not reality, we're just going to buy into this garbage. The next one is, is, is it's all fake, right? 
Now, we do certain behaviors because we're trying to fill a hole or because we're not pursuing real and genuine things. And so we hunger after the counterfeit because we are not developing the real thing. So it's all fake. And so intimacy and realness is something that is cultivated and developed. And we must be willing to do that, to put in the work, to make it happen. Another reason why uh, pornography is so detrimental is because of the lies. Like men are naturally liars, right? You know, we talk about being born sinners. There's two things that that being born a sinner means. It means that you, you live in fear, that, that you have this scarcity mindset. And the second thing is, is that you lie. And these are things that every man has that we have this fear based nature that runs from God runs from intimacy, runs from things that are good. And then we lie about it plain and simple. It's no mystery. And so the pornography only enhances that because once again, we're settling for the cheap substitute. We're settling for the cheap substitute. And we begin to lie about it. And therefore, we have all this shame and all this guilt that's attached to all these lies because of the cheap substitute that we're doing. And lastly, pornography is the easy way, right? Pornography is the easy way. It takes work to develop intimacy, finding out what your, what your wife likes, what to do well, you know, how to reach the magic moment and all of the uh, pornography and all this fake stuff. It takes all that away. Like it has nothing to do with you uh, trying to please or serving your wife. It has to do with fantasy and achieving what you want. And then of course this develops your brain into that mentality and you take that belief system into a marriage and think it's going to work. And it simply doesn't work. Here's a crazy reality about pornography. Once you begin to consume it more and more, then your intimacy with your wife goes down less and less, right? And then we're wondering why we're having sex once a week or once a month or a couple times a year. Maybe it's on your birthday. Maybe it's on Christmas. Who knows where you're at right now, right? But uh, you've, you've gotten there for a certain reason. And instead of development intimacy, you got this cheap substitute. And if you look at, let's just say your year figures that you're intimate with your wife, 12, six, three times that year. And then how many times have you settled for the cheap substitute? I don't know, maybe four times. Let's just say four times a week. And there's 52 weeks in a year. So you got 200 and uh, 208 times. So we got 12 times with the wife and we got 208 times, you know, handling business ourselves. And so when you see the ratio, you, you look at it and say, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with what I'm doing here. And I'm settling for a cheap substitute when I could be developing intimacy and connection with my wife. If I'm speaking to you, I'm giving you the key ingredients for a powerful, powerful ma marriage. And I'll repeat them just in case, um, just in case, but it's being home. It's communicating. It's being present and it's making deposits. It's living by a code and it's avoiding pornography. These are some of the powerful ways to build intimacy inside a marriage in a marriage that will last and that will be strong. So I encourage you brothers, if you're stuck in this cycle of frustration, defeat and guilt, loneliness, it is in your power to change. And in fact, God will empower you and give you his grace to overcome. But it all starts with the choice. Do I want the real deal? Do I want intimacy? Do I want to stop with the addiction?